morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here and those who are, are watching. Do we have any visitors here today? I don't see any. Uh, Joyce, the Opie football team is going to state. Them boys, them boys did a great job Friday night. They really did. Anytime another team has it down on the one foot line, fourth and goal, they, they held them. That, that was impressive, guys. It really was. Uh, we'll go through the announcements, and like I said last week, if you uh, need to butt in there after I say something, just jump right in there. Jerry, I have one thing. Okay. Jerry Rathke sent a thank you to tell all the ladies that donated the desserts and helped with that luncheon for Alan's funeral, uh, Graveside Funeral. Okay. That was real nice, so thank you everybody for that from Jerry Rathke. Okay. She really appreciated that. That was really nice that we did that. Okay. Okay, the Shiloh Home of Hope for Women needs toddler clothes as sizes 2, 3, and 4, and diapers in sizes 4 and 6. I'd like to talk about that. Okay. I have listed with the people at Shiloh House. As far as the need for clothing, that has been satisfied for the people they have there now. But they continue to need diapers size 6. Diapers size 6. Six. Okay, so diapers size 6. like to do that. Okay. And if you want to be in the Christmas Eve program, uh, just contact Crystal. And as far as I know, Terry, we are still planning on having that. Like okay. If, if it changes, you'll let us know, right, Crystal? Yeah. Okay. During November, the adult Sunday school class is collecting Bibles and other Christian materials to donate to the ministry that can use them. Sunday, November 22nd, there's a charge conference. Register to attend at the following link, which is on the, on the sheet. And the youth group meets at the fellowship hall this afternoon. Yes. Sherilyn? Okay, I want to that. Um, we did deliver 24 um, Operation Christmas files yesterday. Mm -hmm. We have the Christmas tree that we did for Christmas. Good, good. And then tomorrow night's a Bible study out here with Merle and Joan. And they're in Matthew chapter 14. Friday, November the 27th, 7th, is Zoom Friday Devotions. Contact Janelle Curry for more information. The Advent Bible Study via Zoom. More information to come Sunday, November the 29th. Tuesday, December the 8th is a Ladies' Fellowship. Saturday, December the 19th is a men's fellowship, which under Joy's, we had a, we had a good uh, breakfast yesterday morning, and the, the, the Bible study was good, so. Mark uh, did the pancakes, I did the sausage, and Travis did the dishes, so. <laughs> he did a good job on them dishes. January uh, 23rd is the Iron Men's Summit. January uh, 23rd, I mean, the 28th is Men's Encounter at the Cross, January 28th. Do we have any uh, birthdays this morning? Okay, so we'll sing Happy Birthday to Her. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries? No. We'll have the children's story. All right. So, in lieu of the children's story, we got a surprise. Oh, surprise. Come on down. Kids, got a surprise for the church, not for the children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, our children, we have decided that we are going to do a special for you this morning. Since we haven't had very many specials these last couple of weeks or last year, we're going to do a special. And Amber's got a little devotional she's going to say. I do. We know that Jesus. 
Jesus is the light of our world. He was sent to earth to guide us Christians in the right path. So one day we will be heaven bound to live with him. So the children chose these two songs. We're going to sing this little light of mine and the hokey pokey. And we <laughs> join us, right? We want you to join us in. Okay? And uh, especially the dog. <laughs> this little light of mine is dark. Okay, the children have, they came up with, I don't know if you're familiar with the indie, but it changes just a little bit. And that hokey pokey, it said, happy, we're heaven bound. So that's what the words are to that one. Okay? All right, so you guys got to see that. Oh, you might want to spread out a little bit. <laughs> okay, ready? Start this one on mine. This little light. First on uh, Light of Mine, the kids have a sing-along. Grandma, well, Grandma has it in her car. Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber. And if you listen to that a couple hundred times, it's kind of a catchy little tune. <laughs> uh, we'll have uh, our gathering hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Make a joyful noise to the Lord of all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep are his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give your thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his hands pass blood endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, you created us to love you and one another. We confess that we have sometimes limited that love to words and failed to make that love real for our actions. Forgive us for bringing your dazzling light into our hearts through the spirits that we might see your glorious opportunities. We have to serve you and love one another. Through Jesus Christ, who loves and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is We Gather Together. The epistle comes from Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in his knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of glory of his inheritance is in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion every name that is named not only in his world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth in all and would you please stand for the gospel Matthew 25 31 through 36 When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory. And behold him shall he gather all nations, and he shall separate from them one another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of your father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, 
from the foundations of the world. For I was a hungered, and you gave me meat. I am thirsty, and you gave me drink. I'm a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. Was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, <clears throat> when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw thee sick, and in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say it unto you. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one or the other, of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you curse it into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hunger, and you gave me no meat. <clears throat> I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, we saw, we saw with thee and hungered or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. And he shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous shall into eternal life eternal. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you and glorify your name. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. First and foremost, uh, I know it's already been said, but I want to congratulate the OP football team for that nail biting game a uh, couple of nights ago. I really enjoyed it, and I want to give a shout out to my players, Darren Hines, Blake, and Damon Redeker. Yeah, those are my players. You guys did well. One thing I want to leave you all with here is this, and that is you'll go into the finals. The finals is not like any other games. So remember the confidence that you had in that game fighting all the way, continuing that fight, because it is full quarters, and the other team would not let go, so you got to keep on pushing, guys. So I thank you. I was, I was very uh, excited to be at that game. It's one of the best football games I've ever seen since I've been on this side. So you guys did well. Continue the good work and keep it up. And Tony, I'm going to be right by you. <laughs> Tony about to blow a gasket out there. <laughs> but that's all right, though. That's good. That's good. Well, this morning, I want to give honor and glory to God for allowing us to be here. And um, please, 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 I take this time to appeal to each and every one of us. Let us be careful out there. The thing that we are dealing with, yes, we are covered by God and we are protected by God. But we must understand one thing, and that is God will protect us, but we got to use our common sense also. So let's continue to wear our masks. Let's continue to physical distance. Let's continue to uh, take care of each other. I was telling Tyson the other day that, uh, actually on Saturday, that I'm very happy for our congregation because we have not had any situation in this church and i praise god for that and for us to remain open and continue to worship in person continue to do the right thing amen, amen. we can't control the people out there but we can control ourselves in here amen, amen. so this morning our scripture read earlier 
from the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 through 23 talks about giving thanks. Now in the various translation uh, for the NIV, that's the New International Version, it states thanksgiving and prayer. In the, the New King James, it says a prayer for knowledge and power. But you see, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the week of thanksgiving, and as such, we lift up prayers to God, giving thanks for how good God has been to us during the year. I know that there are some people right now uh, cannot give thanks because this year has not been good for them. Uh, this year is different, different from what we have done in the past. Traditions are altered and uh, or some of them are changed completely. Thanksgiving for us is a time where families come together from far and wide, gather together to give thanks to God. But I strongly believe that Thanksgiving should not be a one-day event, should not be a one-day celebration. We must give thanks every day of our lives because of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I will be sharing with you very briefly on the topic, a time to give thanks. A time to give thanks. A time to give thanks is every day of our life when we wake up in the morning, we are to give thanks. It is a time to give thanks to God for Jesus Christ, who is our king and leader, the one we have chosen to follow. Uh, on the church calendar or the, the, the liturgical calendar, uh, today is a day that is celebrated as Jesus Christ Day. This day is it, 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 celebrated as a day that is called Christ the King Sunday because uh, the leaders of the church chose this day for us to be reminded of Jesus Christ and what he has done for you and I. This is a day that we celebrate Jesus Christ, the author of our salvation, and the gift that he has given us, which is the church. And so this day is how we must give thanks to God for Jesus Christ. But I say this is the time to give thanks for Jesus Christ, not only because of what Christ has done for us in our lives, but some of the things that Jesus has taught us and is still teaching us how to care for one another. How to care for one another. The scripture that we read earlier in the epistle of Ephesians chapter 1 through 15, Paul begins by stating how much he is giving thanks and praying for his fellow believers since he heard about their faith and love for Jesus Christ. As believers in God, we must not cease to give thanks for Jesus Christ. We must always possess that confidence and believe that despite our circumstances and our shortcomings, and yes, we have had some circumstances and shortcomings over these few months, these, uh, uh, this year. We have had some serious issues with this COVID. We have had some serious issue with the threat of, 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 of our economy being shut down. We have had some serious issues across our country where we have seen People have lost their jobs and they cannot feed their family. We have seen some issues and circumstances where there are some families who decide to eat only one meal a day so that they can provide for their children over the next couple of days. Yes, we have had some circumstances and issues. And I know that some of us may not be dealing with those particular issues, but we have had some issues in our lives that has caused us to sit and wonder and think, where is God? But God is still there. And so we must give thanks daily. 
Paul opened the scripture with prayers and thanksgiving and, pray, and prayers ceaselessly for the Ephesians. Hence, we as Christians must keep each other in prayers. You see, when Paul prayed for the Ephesians, he didn't pray for riches. He didn't pray for them to be free from persecution or oppression. No, he prayed for wisdom and revelation in Jesus Christ. As we see here in the opening of this particular scripture, he says here in verse 15, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. My dear brothers and sisters, we must pray with all season. We must give thanks through prayers for our fellow believers. Yes, it is important that we pray for our fellow believers. You see, we must be reminded of who Jesus Christ is in our lives. We must be reminded of how Jesus, through the Lord God Almighty, adopted us as children of God. But we are not only an adopted children, we are children of God. So having that hope and knowing that Jesus Christ is our Savior, Lord, our brother, and will do all he can to keep us in eternal peace, is something we must give thanks to God for. I say that again. Having Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, who is our brother? Who is the one that will do all things for us? It's a reason why we need to give thanks to God Almighty. The next thing we need to give thanks to God Almighty for is the hope of Christ and the hope of our salvation. Paul goes on to state in verse 18, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. In here, Paul is talking about the eyes of our heart so that we may know the hope for which Christ has called us. Now, what is Paul talking about here? You see, he talks about the eye of our heart. Now, in the New King James translation, or in the King James translation, he says that in the eyes of your understanding, that which must be enlightened. You see, the NIV says the eyes of our heart. The King James translation says, the eyes of our understanding. But what does that mean? Well, I submit to you today, my fellow believers, what Paul is saying here is that our inner awareness, the eyes of our heart or the eyes of our understanding is the inner awareness, our awareness of Jesus Christ. Knowing certainly within our spirit that Jesus Christ has guaranteed us that eternal salvation through his death on the cross for our sins. Yes, Paul is telling us that we must be aware of Christ. You see, let me pause here for a minute. You see, Satan gets possession of our senses and our passions. What do I mean by that? What I mean here is that it is so easy for Satan to take over your, your passion, the way you feel about things, 
I don't like this person because the way how they talk to me. That's a feeling. But Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, take controls of our understanding. And so when you allow your feelings to control you, chances are 99.9% .9 of the time you find yourself dealing in sin. But when you begin to understand Jesus Christ and his love, and you use that as a means to live every day of your life, you begin to understand who Christ is. And so now your feelings will not take control of you because if someone says something all to you or hurt you in a particular way, you allow that love of Christ and the understanding of Christ's love to overpower that hurt. Christ is all in all. My dear brothers and sisters, hope here is something that we expect, something good to happen. This is why it is a time to give thanks that the hope to which Christ has called us is to share in his riches as children of God. Jesus Christ's love for us means that we need to spread that love with others. As we go through this time of thanksgiving, it is a time for us to spread God's love. Yes, I know traditions is being altered. Things are changing. We cannot really get together. But you can still spread God's love by calling someone, sharing a meal to them, taking a meal to someone who cannot make it to come home. Now there are, there are ways, uh, innovative ways of us doing things. Some people are talking about uh, uh, cooking the meal in the community and then taking it to each other's homes. And then they all sit on Zoom and eat at the same time. My dear brothers and sisters, the hope of Christ is important during this Thanksgiving. The next thing Paul talks about here is the power. We must take the time to give thanks because of the power that Christ has bestowed upon us through our Lord God Almighty. In verses 19 through 21, Paul states here, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. The power that Paul is talking about here is God's resurrection power. The power that God gave to Jesus Christ to raise him from the dead. That is the power that Paul is talking about here. He indicates that as believers in Jesus Christ, we too possess such power because of Christ's resurrection. This is a time to give thanks because of that resurrection power of Jesus Christ that we can begin to use in our own lives. We can begin to use that resurrection power when we are faced with our own trials and tribulation. We are reminded of that power in Philippians 3 and 10, which states that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That power of his resurrection means that it is that indomitable power that you can call upon when you find yourself in a place of need, when you find yourself in a place where 
All other ground is sinking sand, and Christ is that solid rock you stand on. You can call on that power when things are not going your way. Yes, you can call on that power. Psalm 77, verses 16 through 19, speaks of God's power in action. If you want to see how, or if you want to know and understand how God's power is in action, read Psalm 77, 16 through 19. This is how powerful we are as followers of Jesus Christ. Yes, this is a time to give thanks because of God's divine power through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Finally, this is a time to give thanks because of Jesus Christ, who is our advocate, our mediator, and our intercessor. And why? It is because he sits on the right hand of God, the Father. In verses 22 to 23, Paul states, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. What Paul is saying here, he's saying that Jesus Christ is God, and God is Jesus Christ. And because of that, God Almighty, who is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, he puts everything under his feet. He put Jesus Christ in control. You know, there's a story of a leader that got elected into the most powerful position in the country. And so the person that helped him, his campaign manager, to get elected, he was so, the leader was so excited and so grateful to that person. He said, tell me, whatever position you want in the, in the land, I will give it to you. And his, and his campaign manager told him, he said, look, I don't want no position. The only thing I want to do is that I just want to sit right by your side and just be there. And he said, and he said that whenever I lean over and whisper in your ear, all I want you to do is just nod your head yes. And so he said, okay. And so the campaign manager had some friends, and the friends was like, look, you know, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, and I want you to do the other. And he said, I got you. Don't worry about it. It will be taken care of. So as they were sitting in a big gathering, and they were having this big old meeting, and he sat by the, the leader, and he said, he leaned over to him, and he just uh, whispered something and said, well, today is a good day. And the lady was like, he said, oh, we're going to have some nice din uh, a lunch after you. He was like, yeah. And so after the meeting, he told his friends, he said, you see, I told you I was going to take care of you. Did you see me telling him? And he know that? He said, yes. He said, yeah. But the thing about it was that that campaign manager had uh, an access to the power seat. And everybody thought that whatever he said to that leader, it was going to happen. And likewise with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God. And God has put everything under his control. Yes, we know that when Satan did what he had to do, they kicked him down out of heaven and he came down to earth. And he has dominion, but he does not have control. But Jesus Christ has control. 
And God has given him all power. And Jesus Christ has us as his brothers, his sisters. And so whatever we want, when we ask in the name of Jesus, it will come to pass. You know, as I was studying this scripture, I was caught between two words. Mediator and intercessor. And I was like, but the both of them are the same. But spoiler alert, they are not. A mediator is someone who is neutral and has the interest of both sides. So he's going to make sure that everybody come together to get one common objective. And he will, that mediator will go out of the way. But an intercessor is someone who will just stand there for that time being and then they will leave. But Jesus Christ is our mediator. He's our intercessor. And he's our advocate. He's all three in one. Now, if you didn't understand what I meant by a mediator and intercessor, let me just give you an example, an example from the Bible. Moses was an intercessor. The priest, the Levite priest, the Levitical priests, they were all intercessors. Because what they did was they would stand there and they would give the people requests to God. And then they would leave. They were not mediators. Jesus Christ is the only mediator. The prophets are, medi are intercessors. You and I, we are intercessors because when we pray for somebody, which of course we're going to do after this sermon, we are interceding for them. We are praying for them. As a mediator, you are there. You have both parties and you bring them together. You make sure that they come together. And Jesus Christ is our only mediator. You will never see in the Bible where they say Moses or Abraham or someone were intercessors. So that is the difference. Jesus Christ is our mediator. He's there for us. And so... Christ being our ruler, the one that is on high, he is there to take care of us. So as we begin to go through this time of thanksgivings, let's continue to give thanks for Jesus Christ, for who he is. Let's continue to give thanks for Christ, who is the hope for which God has called us. Let us continue to give thanks for Christ, for the inheritance of his kingdom he has for us. Let us continue to give thanks for Christ, who has given us divine power to be able to overcome our issues, our problems, our circumstances, and our situations. Let us continue to give thanks for Jesus Christ, who is our mediator, who is our intercessor, and who is our advocate. Amen, amen, and amen. As we prepare our hearts after hearing God's word, are there any prayer concerns out there today? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the storm and blast and our eternal home. Most gracious and loving Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. We come now, Lord, pray for healing. Pray for healing for Mitch, dear God, as he has gone home, Heavenly Father, even though he's not doing well, but God, you have everything in your hands. 
And we glorify your name and we magnify you because we know that you are our Jehovah Rapha. You're going to heal his body. We pray for Cody also, dear God, that as he go and do this test, Heavenly Father, that the doctors will be able to determine what is going on with him, Heavenly Father. But we pray now that God, that you will heal his body, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. That whatever that he's dealing with, dear God, it will be taken away. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Roy, Heavenly Father, for having this uh, kidney. Dear God, we pray that you will be with him, Heavenly Father. Continue to comfort him and give him that peace. We know that you've come thus far, but dear God, you will not leave him alone. We thank you for his mother and father, dear God, even though they cannot be with him. But dear God, we know that you will be with him. And so we magnify your name and we lift you up on high. We glorify you for all that you continue to do for us. We now present our, our uh, OP football team to you, OP high school football team, dear God. We thank you for the victory, but dear God, there's one that is, that is in need right now. So we pray right now that, dear God, you will continue to strengthen each and every player, Heavenly Father. God, you will continue to give them that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You will be with the coaches and all the players as, as they go for this game in haze. Dear God, you will give them safe travels, Heavenly Father. We magnify your name and we know that you can do what you said you would do, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this victory in advance. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you be with each and every one of us as we come to celebrate this this time of thanksgiving heavenly father god we pray that you will give those who are traveling to family members a safe travel lord that we will all have a safe thanksgiving lord and return uh, to our various activities after thanksgiving safely lord and being protected from this dangerous covid uh, virus heavenly father god we magnify your name we continue to ask for your hedge of protection around each and every one we pray for our congregation all the silent prayer request heavenly father god we pray that you will continue to bless us individually and collectively as a congregation lord we magnify your name and we give you up on high we pray for those who are uh, listening on, on on air dear god that you will continue to bless them and keep them in your care heavenly father we give you honor glory and praise and we pray now that god you continue to keep us in your perfect care Despite our situation and our circumstances, we will continue to love you henceforth, now and forever. Now as your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has taught us to pray, we are bold to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please prepare your hearts for our tithes and offerings. Will you please stand? Please continue standing for our going forth him. Now thank we all our God. Thank you. 
Let us receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you as you depart this place. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to give ship to his kingdom. May the Lord grant you time, this time, now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.